Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. Be sure to like and subscribe this video for more content on any of your alternative football favorites. Now, on to the show. <laughs> Joining me today, I have a special guest who is currently preparing for the opening week of the National Arena League season. Uh, he is a very much a staple in any of the arena circles. If you have not heard of Craig Leg Peterson, I don't know what you have been watching or what arena you have been watching because he has been in all the top leagues. Again, it is Craig Peterson, current place kicker for the Albany Empire. You may have also seen him play for the Columbus Destroyers in the AFL, the Spokane Empire, or the Tampa Bay Storm, or the Carolina Cobras. He's been all over the arena leagues. He He's kind of, a, kind of an expert. Craig, welcome in to the show. Appreciate you taking the time as you're getting ready for the uh, home, or at least for the home opener here coming up at the end of this week as we're recording. Um, what's going on? How, how are things in upstate New York? Uh, first of all, thanks for having me, man. I, I do appreciate you uh, having me on here. Uh, as for Albany, New York, I mean, it's, uh, it's warm finally, so I'm not complaining coming from Tampa. Uh, I've been living down there for a little bit, so coming up here, again, with some warm weather, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not upset about it at all. So it's, it's nice to be up here, especially where I'm from. Uh, I get to see my family, friends. In fact, I just got to see my mom and one of my brothers last night. So uh, very fortunate to be up here and playing for the Albany Empire. Well, it's fantastic. And you're playing for a, a, a franchise that's getting restarted with a fan base that I imagine is looking forward to seeing its beloved team back, even in a different league, you know, which we'll get into that. I want to I want to discuss, of course, that aspect. But first off, I always when I have a player on. I got to ask the story of, you know, the passion for the game. It's the first thing I have to know. You know, so obviously uh, you're, you are, a, you're a place kicker, you know, special teams by nature. Um, what, what is your background in football? Like, how'd you get things started or when did you first get the itch to uh, begin playing in the sport and how do you progress into becoming a kicker? It's, uh, it's, uh, you have to go too in depth with it. Uh, I'm actually writing, uh, I'm in, I'm in the process of writing a book about, just, uh, you know, just my life in general, but, you know, mainly my football career and how things all started and stuff like that. But um, to start things off, it's, um, it is crazy how this, this whole thing started and this, this journey and, you know, with football and just my life in general. But uh, I was watching a preseason game with a bunch of, bunch of friends of mine before my senior year at Cortland State, where I went to college and uh, attained my, my, my bachelor's degree there. And we're just watching, I think it was the Jets. I don't remember who they were playing, but I do remember Jay Feely. Okay. Because he missed a couple of field goals that game. Not to call him out or anything, uh, <laughs> but he, you know, he missed a couple of field goals. And, and another, I think it was like the second one he missed in this preseason game. We're just hanging out in Albany, New York, for that matter. And he ended up missing a 50-yard field goal. I think his second one, his first one was, was within 40 yards. So it was, was kind of close. And uh, I just go, I'm like, man, these guys get paid millions of dollars to kick a football. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> I could do that. I could kick a yard. So of course, I'm upset. I'm just like, this is crazy. And then they're all like, no, no, you can't. You can't do it. I'm like, dude, we'll go walk over to Albany High right now, and I'll go kick a 50-yard. And they're, you know, prove it. That was like our thing that we always said. Okay. And I was like, okay, let's, let's go. So we all walked over. We jumped the fence. And uh, – you know, long without any details, I ended up hitting a 50 yard field goal. So first try. So wow. after that, you know, a couple of my buddies were like, you know, maybe you should, uh, maybe you should try kicking or something. So I was like, all right, yeah, maybe I should. So I, I went back to school for my senior year and I actually tried out for as a kicker, punter and wide receiver at Cortland State. And that's, that's where it all started because I, uh, before that I played soccer, you know, growing up in high school. And I never really been cut from a team. You know, I never, I didn't. I've been fortunate enough to not know what that feels like. Nowadays, you know, now it's you know that's a part of life. You know, if you get cut, you keep going, you move on, you get better, and you know, hopefully, you get picked up by somebody else. But you know, growing up, it wasn't like that. So, being cut from Cortland, knowing that I was, I mean, guys on the team that were seniors were telling me, dude, how did you not make the team? Like. I worked my ass off for, you know, the whole semester 
and it's just because it was the semester before like they call it spring spring ball right sure sure and um because i was going into my senior year and i ended up doing another semester in Cortland just so i can meet possibly have like another chance at playing and i i didn't get it and i i just, i was so upset by that where i knew i should have been playing and gotten a, a shot to play college ball and the fact fact that I didn't get it, the coach tells me we didn't recruit you and I'm thinking this is a division th- this is a division three school this isn't this isn't <laughs> Ohio State or Penn State right this is right. SUNY Cordell this is a state university mm-hmm. in New York Cortland this is that's what where this is right a d3 school and for him to tell me that I'm like you've got to be kidding me there is no way you're about to tell me oh we've got a you know fifth year senior coming back and I was doing just as good as he was, and I had never played before. So that that pissed me off. And uh, that was what fueled the fire, man. That After that, I'm like, you know what? I'm going to go at this 110%. I'm not going to stop. I'm going to make sure that I'm prepared for whatever the next opportunity may be. And that's where it all started, man. Get, getting cut from a D3 school was a low blow, even though I knew I should have. I could have even gotten the, uh, the position at wide receiver. I don't even know how I didn't get that because I was better than a lot of wide receivers that were there. Not only was I faster, but I've had better hands. So I don't know. I had the highest vertical on the entire team. I had the furthest broad jump when we all tested. It was, uh, it was crazy. I just, I just, I was shocked, but I was also uh, motivated at that point to, to continue playing football and trying to become, you know, a professional athlete. Right. And hey, you've made the best of it so far, at least in the arena scene. You're here, at least many, a very well-known name at this point. Uh, and I, I assume, I assume as well for you, you've done tryouts with various other teams too, even outside of arena. Yeah. Yeah. I've had a bunch. Uh, in fact, when I first, you know, decided that I was going to go at this 110%, I figured I needed some kind of, you know, guidance. Right. So I got a kicking mm-hmm. coach out in Buffalo, New York, Sam Watts. Uh, okay. We have a very good relationship till, still to this day. And, you know, he helped me out. He, he saw something that I didn't see that he just knew, you know, he knew that I, he could take me to another level, that next level. And he ended up doing just that, you know, with no high school football, no college football. And uh, apparently it was no, it was no problem for him. He just sees things that people don't see and to have that kind of guidance and someone looking after me, trying to, to make me the best kicker that I could possibly be, he did a wonderful job. So getting to these, these open, you know, these open tryouts uh, that people talk about, that's the only really avenue that I had, right? You, you know, you got the CFL, you got the NFL, and then there's the AFL. We didn't even look at the AFL when I first started out. All okay. we were looking at was CFL open tryouts. And I don't know if people remember this, but they used to have combines, these regional combines for kickers, punters, and snappers for the NFL. Yes. And they'd be in, they'd be in certain regions throughout the country. And, of course, we used to hit all of those, as many of them, you know, that we could up and just see how I did and how I fared against these kids, that, you know, top kids in the country. There were some kids that probably didn't belong there, but they, you know, you pay your dues and you go to, you know, these open tryouts and see what you got. So, I went to one actually funny with the New York Jets. I did pretty. I did pretty well. I know I could have done better, but okay. um, I will say I wasn't fully prepared. I, I, I wasn't ready. And when those regional combines stopped, I I don't remember if it was 2012 or 2013. They stopped having them. So then we had to figure out something else. So then we started punting. So he taught okay. me how to punt. Because now we've got to take the CFL route and we're like, okay, maybe, maybe we're not going to be able to just go straight to the NFL with no background. So now let's try to take the CFL route. So you can punt and kick and kick off. We got a better shot to get in the CFL and then hopefully work our way up to the NFL from there. So we started punting, started kicking, kicking off all three, started going to some open tryouts. The crazy thing, not a lot of people know this, man. I'm telling you, I finally got a workout with the Toronto Argonauts in 2013, I ended up missing my brother's wedding to go to that. Oh, and I think that it speaks, vo- it speaks volumes for what I was trying to accomplish. Now, of course, before everyone freaks out, I talked to my brothers. I have three older brothers. I talked to all of them. I talked to my parents. 
you know, this wasn't, you know, a decision that I took lightly, right. but um, they were all gung ho about it because after, you know, two years of getting up to that point, going to these open tryouts, traveling, going all over the place, I moved to Buffalo and, uh, and I just had an opportunity. I, I felt like I had to take it, but you know what, if, if my brother Chris says, you know what, don't come to the wedding. I obviously would have came to the wedding, but he knew how long I had been training for, for that opportunity. And I, I took it. I went with it. They said, you know, you were born to do this. You've been doing this for a while. This is your, this is an opportunity for you to hopefully start your career and, you know, get after it. We'll see you after. So I ended up taking it. Uh, nothing ended up happening, happening from it, which is unfortunate, but I took the experience from that. And then I had a workout with the, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, the Ottawa Red Blacks shortly a year, uh, maybe like six months after that. And then from that workout, I ended up getting invited to training camp with the Ottawa Red Blacks in 2014. Okay. okay. So did it, ba- does it balance? I think so. You know, it was, it was, uh, it's it was a long run. I know my mom still gives me crap about not being in some of the pictures at the wedding, but you know, it is what it is. So the, the sacrifices I think people don't understand about what you need to do to be a professional athlete is just, and I don't think it's talked about enough. I really don't. And the things that uh, me personally, that I've had to endure and the obstacles and adversity I've had to overcome, you know, I, I that's why I'm writing about it because it, it's just, it's unreal. There's so many. And I don't think people understand, you know, the common fan of, of what goes into doing what I do on a daily basis. You know, there's a lot of things that you have to give up that you have to sacrifice in your life. And it's, it's hard. It is, it takes a lot out of you. Um, you know, that's not even talking about the stress that comes along with it. Oh yeah. So there's ways that you, you know, you have, what's that? Oh, I said, I just can't even imagine, you know, yeah. And I, yeah. And I finished and I ended my playing career in high school. So, I mean, I don't, beyond that, you know, that was just for, for me, I went the the standard road, you know, you're taking the, you're taking the road that, that's uh, less traveled, but you know, has more of the reward. <laughs> correct. Correct. And, and, and for me, you know, it was all about the vision. I, I had a vision. My kicking coach had the same vision and we stuck with it, you know, and that's, that, that's just what you need to do. And some people give up halfway through and maybe they're almost there and, and they're just like, you know what, I don't want to do this anymore. Or they fall out of love with it. Or um, they're just they're just done, and I never got to that point. So I, I I wanted to make sure that I did everything that I possibly could in my power to get somewhere and play football, and it, it ended up working out for me. And like I said, I, I just don't I don't think people really understand all the sacrifices that go along with it. But you know that's why we talk about it, and that's why people start to you know begin to relate and understand that holy crap, these these guys really do put a lot of work into this. Right, and this is one reasons I love player stories. Everyone has their own. Everyone has their different roads that they take, and you know different twists and turns and ways that they get there. At least as an athlete, so you know that's why I ask with everyone that comes on, and you know yours is just another another example, but in a different twist to that entire formula if you will on just finding your way and you know having the passion for the sport you know it's great and you know i obviously you've been you you took your lumps and have gone down the road you know i know you the cfl you had plenty of camp experience i know uh even besides the red blacks now 2017 i understand you were also in camp with the tiger cats uh for Mm -hmm. a bit too um and during that point you would actually already just gotten to your arena side which let me ask you this when did arena become part of the uh, goal because you said that originally AFL you you and your kicking coach weren't looking at but then you know I know in 2015 you did end up making and playing for the Tampa Bay Storm one of the most at least when it, they were still in existence one oh, yeah. of the most recognized and crowned arena football teams at the time yeah that's uh you know obviously that's a whole other story in itself but after the Red Blacks training camp I was devastated um I actually went up a kid, went up against the kid one on one in the morning. We both flew in the same time, or they flew us in at the same time. And uh, his name was Brett Maher, and I'm pretty sure a lot of people know who that is. He's the former Dallas Cowboys kicker, yeah, who was released a couple years ago. He also ended up playing for the Hamilton Tiger Cats after he got released from the Ottawa Red Blacks from a hip injury he had. So I see him, and I had actually. 
actually just competed against him at the Winnipeg Blue Bombers mini camp that they held in Bradenton at IMG Academy a couple months before that. So I knew exactly who he was. And, you know, he's fresh out of Nebraska. You know, he did his four years there. He had a pretty good career at Nebraska. And, uh, you know, I already knew who he was. I had already kicked against him and I was feeling pretty good. I was feeling confident. One on one, we uh, we tied in field goals. We both went nine for 10. Okay. And I'm going to get to the Tampa Bay story. Don't worry, because this, this is this oh, is sure, where sure. it's a shift for me. Um, we both went nine for 10. He missed from, I believe 55. I missed from 50. And then the punting came around and I'm like, you know what? I know I can punt. I know I'm a pretty good punter at this point. And my kickoffs are bread and butter. I my kickoffs have always been my thing. So we do, uh, we do the punting and, you know, I think we only had maybe six or seven punts. And I think I turned at least five over and my hang times were good. He was, he was kind of mishitting them. They weren't going in the right direction. So I definitely beat him in the punting aspect. We tied in the field goals, and I'm like, we're doing kickoffs now. This is great. So my tang times were better than his, and my distances were better than his in the kickoffs. So we, we both go over. They brought us one by one to go talk to the GM because everyone was out there. The whole team was watching. The GM was out there, the, um, the assistant GM, the head coach, all the coaching staff, they talked to him, they talked to me, and I'm thinking, I got the job. Like, I got this. I'm going to start playing. Mm -hmm. And I obviously didn't get it because of the, ex the experience I did not have because I had never played football before this point. So they kept me, though. Okay. They go, hey, listen, we want to keep you here in camp. Brett's going to play against Montreal for the preseason game. You'll stay here. We will still house you, feed you, all that stuff. You'll, you'll be with the team, working out, all that stuff. So at that point, I knew I belonged. You know what I mean? I knew I belonged there, and I knew I probably should have got that job if I had played something of, you know, of college football at all. Right, just a bit of an that's experience that you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. They didn't say that, but that's exactly what they were saying without okay. saying. So – they ended up releasing me, of course. They stuck with Brett. He had a good game against Montreal. And it, it was what it was. But when I when they flew me back to um, – where was I at the time? I actually ended up moving down to Florida for a little bit. Okay. Just to see what would happen from Buffalo. My kicking coach and I talked about it. I flew back there. Um, I ended up driving home. Stayed there for a few months. I needed to be with some kind of, you know, family, friends. I needed to be around that kind of atmosphere at that point because I was devastated. Sure. I drove back down to Florida three months later. So it was right around December time. I said, I'm going to give it one more shot, right? I'm going to try to do any kind of open tryout that I can for another four months. And I ended up living in the, this, uh, this person's house from freaking Craigslist that I found just rented a bedroom, stayed there, went to all these tryouts. And I said, you know what, if this doesn't work, I'm going to go back home, and, you know, get a job back at the bank or something. Okay. And I had a workout with the Tampa Bay storm. It was an open tryout. And I, 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 I blew it out of the park. I even hit the jumbotron at the top, uh, at the top for a kickoff. Wow. Smash it right in the jump. He's like, Hey, Hey, listen, you know, keep them lower. Cause I don't know if I like broke <laughs> bulb or something. But at that point, the, the guys that I was going up against, that they were thinking about bringing into training camp, it made it look like I was on another level. You know, they were getting the ball in the end zone. I was getting the ball in the stands. So from that point, they talked to me after the workout. They said, hey, we like the way you kick, this, that, and the other. I got a call about a month later saying, hey, listen, Craig, we want to bring you into training camp. And then uh, that's that's where it all started. That's that's kind of the route that I had to take. And when we knew about arena football, just real quick, when I talked to my kicking coach, when when I had drove down to Florida just to find a place to live, mm -hmm. we knew that there was three NFL teams down here. The CFL training camps and some mini camps are not training camps. I'm sorry, mini camps are held IMG Academy. So okay. we knew that as well. And then we knew that you, we had three AFL teams down here, given the Jacksonville Sharks, the Orlando Predators, and the Tampa Bay Storm. So with all those professional teams down in Florida, that's where we were like, you know what, I need to, I need to put a home base there for at least a year and just see what happens.
And uh, we ended up doing that and best decision I ever made. <laughs> Casting the net makes complete sense to me if, if you're asking me. <laughs> and hey, there you have it, you know. Uh, you know, <laughs> you're talking the Jumbotron. I always have wanted to ask this for a kick for anyone that's kicked in these leagues. So this is my time. You know, the Jumbotron honestly is an obstacle if you kick too high. Um, what are what are some of the challenges? I mean, I know you don't have anything that's weather based that would affect your kicks, but you do have, you know, it's a narrower field and you even have a different style of play because, you know, you played as I'm we were talking before we even started this, you know. You were in AFL, you've been in the NAL, which you're currently in now, and a spell in the IFL. So the big three that were in existence at the time, at least till the AFL, unfortunately, went bankrupt in 2011 or 2019, you know, you have the nets or no nets. You have both the same narrowness and yard length. Like, what are, what are the challenges? And, you know, what are, what are just some differences in strategy between, say, indoor versus pure arena football? So the Arena Football League, pretty much every stadium that you're going in, has an NBA team in it or an NHL team, for the most part. Sure. So those arenas are, are rather big. And the reason why it was a big deal that I hit the Jumbo Tron in Tampa is because it's so much higher. Like, you, you should never – you know what I'm saying? Like, you That's should right. never hit. Mm -hmm. So me hitting that to them was like a big deal. Like, okay, this kid's got a cannon. Hence, Craig the leg, right? Yeah. So, I, well, that answers the question I was going to ask, but <laughs> <laughs> <right in there. laughs> so that was a big deal for that. But never had an issue hitting, for the most part, hitting the jumbotrons in the Arena Football League. Now, when you talk about the National Arena League, I remember playing in Maine, right? Ooh. Maine, Columbus, um lehigh valley just to name a few where you really do if you if you know what you're doing and you can kind of practice it you can make yourself look a lot better than some of the kickers out there because what you're doing is you can hit the kickoff at a, a different trajectory now everyone knows if you don't know that it's a, a deuce is two points on the kickoff right yes mm -hmm. so it, that's huge in the national arena league and that, that's a reason why i love it you know i love the afl too but that's huge. That makes us as kickers so much more valuable, right, to the game. And exactly. I love that. So when you have a low skill trajectory, it has to be more of a line drive, right? Instead right, of right. just hitting a normal kickoff. You can get the same the same result from a normal kickoff, but but you're not hitting it differently. You're hitting it the same every time. Now you actually have to have to hit it differently to get a different trajectory so you're not hitting the ceiling. Okay. And so, main you know, man, main what's that well, i was gonna say i might as well sidetrack here you here too uh you can explain maine but i actually want to see you know if you're talking at least the style of stadium what's times union center like for you then you know you've been there in the afl now you're gonna be in the nal too so you know but, so yeah yeah so just like the carolina cobras when that was in the nal they had an afl type building which okay. was great Albany is the same thing. Times Union Center, there's no issues. I, I love these kind of arenas. These, these arenas are big. They're meant for this kind of stuff. Um, so, like I said, Maine, I mean, that route, you, I'll hit that roof every time, the ceiling, or at least the <laughs> beams at the top. And you really do, you know, I, I struggled a little bit at first. The I believe it was my first away game. Yeah, and it was at Maine. And I was like, holy crap, this, these, this ceiling is low. And I, had, I only had one deuce that game. And there was another game we had in Maine the same year in 2018 where I had one, one, uh, one deuce that game. And it's tough. It, you really do have to adapt. And that's how you – I feel like that's how you can really tell a good kicker from a great kicker is the way that they adapt to the different types of fields that they're playing in uh, stadiums, we should say, or arenas. Mm -hmm. And Lehigh Valley, you could tell I started to get it. started to click as the season progressed. I started to adapt a lot better. I think Lehigh Valley, I had four deuces that game. And you can even see the ball when the Jumbotron's here. Mm -hmm. You can see the ball go at that trajectory, and it was still ascending, going past it. So it was almost still coming up, going past the Jumbotron. So, you know, if I had hit a normal ball, it's going to hit it every time. But you can see that going up. And then by the time it's over here, it ends right here, and it just keep, kept going up. So – once I started to get the hang of it, it makes it so much easier on my life. 
And obviously it helps our team out more. So you have guys kicking from the sides, right? All the way on the side. Oh yeah. I don't know. I, I would just, you know, obviously that's, that lessens your chance to, uh, to hit deuces, but you know, whatever people prefer and, you know, whatever their type of, of way to go about it is, uh, is their own preference. So it's definitely different. Well, yeah, I, that's one thing with the, with the deuce rule, you know, uh, that was consistent consistent for threat for you. And I find many videos on Twitter where, you know, it's almost like you're like a, uh, at times a poster child for the rule itself, you know, just trying to nail, <laughs> nail it, you know, they're t- like, for example, leading up into this conversation, you know, the IFL, which last year in their very shortened season leading into this year. Now they finally adopted the deuce rule. However, it's only within the last minute of every half. So you can only mm-hmm. somewhat use it. You know, the NAL, you can use it any given time of the game, you know, any kickoff. Um, but you know, in their own, in some of these articles, write-ups, you, your videos are in there for examples of what this looks like in particular. So, you know, the NAL, at least in the IFL, you get to use that for the deuce rule, but say like back in the AFL, you have the nets, you know, how are you, how are you strategizing with the nets? Like, I know you, it's probably more likely, I assume you kick on the sides just to get the net hit more directly, or, you know, would you sometimes try and hit it down the middle just to not get a return? I'm glad you asked that actually. And I, I kind of, I kind of got away from the AFL a little bit, but I used to love those, those nets because the bars that connect to it is what I'm always aiming at. Okay. So we call it a bar ball in the AFL and bar balls. I mean, those, those balls are weirdly shaped and, you know, they're like, you know, sort of composite, composite mm-hmm. balls, whatever. And when they hit that bar, they, they can bounce anywhere and the ball is live. So it's uh, not, yes. it's like kicking an onside kick without kicking an onside kick. So if you're aiming for that middle slack net, which would technically be a deuce in the National Arena League, usually the ref blows the whistle, they call the play dead, they get the ball to the two-yard line. So now they're working with a really long field and we have a better chance at a safety. Or if you're a little bit off, you hit that bar, that could go anywhere. I mean, there was so many times where I, we call them kick sixes, where <laughs> I'll nail the bar, it'll bounce, the returner won't know where it is, and then one of our guys picks it up and scores a touchdown. On, the, on that same play, on the same kickoff. So those were cool. I, I loved I loved that aspect of the AFL. It makes it much more exciting on the kickoffs. Um, every kick is returnable for the most part, right? So if, if you do hit the net, they're going to return it. That's a chance for, you know, a kicker to make a play. I even have, a, I believe I have a forced fumble and a fumble recovery in my career in the AFL. So it's pretty cool. Right. But the, the nets are, are, are a different beast. They're a different aspect. They, they change the, uh, the game a bit on special teams, right? Because mm-hmm. in the NAL and IFL, you kick it out of bounds, right? If, it, if you don't hit the deuce or whatever, it goes out of bounds. You get the ball 20. This is just more action. And that, that was a part of the game I do miss from the AFL. I have something I, I want to ask you here. And this is one thing I've noticed, and, you know, especially now the, with the AFL non-existence and the IFL and NAL kind of taking over as the two predominant, I mean, even CIF, if you want to add them in kickers, I know a good kicker is not easy to come by, but it seems that with these indoor leagues without the netting now, they're not as often as valued for good kicks, or at least it seems like it's just an extra piece that we have to use rather than let's get one that's a weapon to use do you feel Mm -hmm. that's a case or is that just something just from you know it's a position that's hard to find a good spot for anyway i i always felt like it's hard it's hard it's hard to find you know good kickers in the arena league because if you think about it your margin of error is so much more playing inside than kicking outside you know what i mean sure it's essentially it's half so your margin of error is, is so much higher kicking inside. And to find someone, I mean, if you get a, a college kicker coming in and their, you know, their percentages are pretty good, just think about how much they're going to struggle when they get inside. You know, there's probably some, some NFL kickers out there that, that would struggle play, kicking inside. Let me tell you something right now. I would love – to run outside and take the snow, the wind, the hail, the sleet, the rain. I'll take all that stuff with 18 foot uprights, 10 feet high, then kicking inside with 15 foot high uprights and nine feet wide. For any, day, <laughs> any day, any day, okay. any day. 
Because now think about this, and nobody nobody really thinks about this. Look who's snapping and holding in the Arena Football League. People that have never done it before. That's a good point. Never done it before. In the league and in the CFL, you've got guys that that's all they do. All they do is snap. All they do is hold. That, that's their job, right? That's what they get paid to do. Guys in here, you got linemen that don't know how to snap that are that are your snapper. Or you got a wide receiver that's never held before, and you got to teach them how to do that too. So now what now what happens? So now your margin of error is already like minimum um, is already extended to more than 50%, right? Sure. Now you're dealing with a snapper and a holder that may not know what they're doing. So now your margin of error is, is way more than 50% than kicking outside. So like I said, I, I would take that in a heartbeat, but it goes to the fact of what you just said earlier, finding a good kicker for the arena football league is that much harder. And you know, the re I take a lot of pride in what I do and anyone can tell you this, that's, that's played with me before that's worked out with me. I can snap, hold and kick. If I could do all three, I would do it, but I can't. Because I've taught, I've taught guys how a long snap, and I've taught guy, I've taught pretty much every holder I've had. There, I got very lucky. I got very lucky my first year in Tampa Bay, my rookie season, where uh, Luke Collis was my holder, and he had actually held before, and he was phenomenal. Um, but other than that, it's it's been it's been tough. It's been tough. Jordan Jolly actually with the Cobras too. He was pretty he was pretty good, okay. but Luke was probably the best. And it's hard. It's really hard to find people that not only like doing it, but are good at it. You know what I mean? Right. Cause you want right. someone who wants to do it, you know, that that's, that's the hardest part. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that people don't think about that. And that's what makes our job as an arena kicker that much harder than kicking outside. Cause you guys got, you got guys doing that, that, that do it for a living. Whereas in here, it, it just makes our life that much harder. So, you know, it's tough. True. And, and, you know, that is, I mean, they're all essential pieces, you know, the margin of error, you know, the art of a kick is very much tactitional, if you will, it has to be every bit of timing has to be correct. Any thrown off piece of the mechanism and it just goes straight to hell, you know, no matter mm -hmm. what league you're in. And I, I bring up that question again, because, you know, I'm just looking at least the last, this start of this season with the IFL and just thinking about 2019, you know, now credit that if I don't know anyone's other's names right now, I apologize. But the only one that comes to mind besides yourself, I think straight to Ernesto Lacayo over in Arizona right now as consistent Oops. guys. It's like, okay, I've got this down. There's no problem with kicking an arena. I it's systematically, I figured it out. You know, that that's kind of why I bring this question up. It's like, it's that it's even that much rarer. It seems to get a kicker that knows what they're doing. You know, even it's just for PATs, you know, it just is that much harder. It almost looks like for the arena style too yeah yes no of course of course I, I agree with you and i think that's you know that going back to what we were just saying that's why it's so hard to find guys in the arena football league or you know nal and ifl now that are that are very good and i don't think it's so much that they're taking away from special teams like maybe maybe like you said like they don't they don't really care about, you know, what kicker they got because they're going to keep playing the way that they want to play. I just feel like teams that do find the kickers tend to excel, right? Those teams that True. are good, they tend to have good kickers. And I think the coaches that know that, that know how valuable the kicking position is, that makes for, that makes for a good team because it's a third of the game, right? Mm -hmm. There's offense, defense, and special teams. It's a third of the game. You, you win and lose by that. And I was going to, I forgot to say this earlier, but the Arena Football League, I can't tell you, man, how many games are won and lost by one or two points. So and they true. tend to be the points that are missed by us, you know, and then you got to go for two at the end of the game. And if you don't get it, you don't get it. And that's why the score looks the way it does. And that's, that's why I think in the Arena Football League, kickers were valued that much higher, where it's like, we need to get someone who is consistent and who can make, you know, 10 out of 10 PATs. Because if you don't, you got that guy that's, you know, got that lower percentage, that, get, that game starts going through, right? Maybe you need a field goal at the end of the game, right? Mm -hmm. You want to be able to rely on someone. And, you know, that's, that's where I think the Arena Football League has really made, you know, arena kickers valuable. 
and the National Arena League, I just feel like we're so much more valuable. The IFL, when I played for Spokane, I felt like I was valued, but there was no, like the kickoffs, I just felt like I was wasting my time. Okay. Because you got to squib kick it every time, and that's just not me, right? It's like we're, I'm not utilizing my potential. So with the, with the National Arena League, it's a no-brainer. You know, with the kickoffs being the way that they are, that we can get more points on the board. And, uh, you know, with, without the nets, so now you're going for field goals, right? Right. As far as you want to go. And I, I like that. That's maybe the only thing that I do and don't like about the nets is that a lot of the times if you're further back, the coach will tell you to either kick it out of bounds in the Arena Football League or um, – or they'll tell you to like, you know, go for it, but make sure you get it past the, past the wall or whatever, I you know, without trying to hit the net. And usually it's, you know, you, you never know. You don't, unless you're kicking out of bounds or you're actually going for the field goal. And if for some reason you're a couple feet off, it's like, oh, now they can get a return. Whereas the NAL, you can go for it. You know, if you do miss, which obviously, you know, you're, you're make, looking to make it every time it doesn't matter, right? There's no net there. So they get a return off of it. You know that you're going for that field goal. And then obviously the deuce rule. So with those mm -hmm. two things, with the field goals and the deuces, I do like that more, but I also miss the bar balls like I was talking about earlier. So it's, it's, it's a balance. It's a toss up, but. You know. As a, as a fan of the game, I like the, as you're talking the bar ball, I like the insanity of the bar ball. That's why I like the nets. I'm actually kind yeah. of a stickler for them at times too, but you know, that's another story. And you know, that's a, you know, if it comes back at some point in any of your league, who knows, but right now, you know, you got the, you got a tighter, you got a tighter goalpost to kick through or the, sorry, the pipes as they call them in these, yeah. in these leagues, you know, which I've, I just started getting that term last year. I was like, Okay. Yeah, I see it. I get it. You know, it looks like PBC. <laughs> <laughs> <You know? laughs> Can't be wrong. Um, no. Yeah. Uh, let me, let me, let's, let's go into here to the team you're on currently. So you're joining the Albany empire, right? Or for this 2020 season, That's kind right. of a unique concept with the empire because they were with the AFL, you know, mm -hmm. the ownership, I believe the current, the ownership of the Orlando predators was able to revive the or Albany empire. And after, of course, you know, the unfortunate circumstances with COVID-19 having to move the NAL season till this year and just getting in crunch time where it was within a few days, they decided we're doing a season based on the capacity restrictions. Yeah. Here we are. Um, how has it been joining this team? Cause it, it's been like a whirlwind that this roster came together. You had Rob O'Keefe leave for the IFL for the Barnstormers with, you know, his former assistant coach, now head coach of the Iowa Barnstormers, Les Moss. And now you're under coach menace or Tom menace as your head coach with a completely revamped roster and some stars of the AFL game with you. Yeah. Yeah. That's it, it is a, there are some guys here that, that I know I've played against, I've played with, uh, but there are, we do have a lot of rookies. And I think that goes for a lot of the teams this year where they have a lot of rookies on their rosters. And that's not a bad thing. You know, it's just about how well they adapt to the game. And, uh, you know, there's going to be growing and stuff like that. But, you know, we have a, we definitely have a very unique roster. And, you know, with Tommy Grady at the helm, everyone knows he's a Hall of Fame quarterback. Oh, yeah. uh, Derek Ross, our fullback, that's a Hall of Fame fullback right there. So, those two guys, we got a great center and, and Sean Lockett. So just just the main pieces to to build on um, for at least an offense is is good. You know, they're positive things. They're able to teach the wide receivers and you know the linemen what they need to do, and uh, you know in order to be successful. And I think we got a good group, a good core core group of guys that are able to do that and, and exude that um, that leadership. I would say to to make us better, make us whole, but it's Tommy Grady, man. That's uh, you know, I've played against him enough times to hate going against him. So now that he's, we're on the same team, I'm, I'm all for it, but we do have, like I said, we have a lot of rookies and, you know, just like, you know, we did when we were rookies, you know? So with that being said, I, you know, I'm excited. I'm excited to get, get this first game underway against the Columbus Lions on Saturday and just see kind of where we're at, you know, because it's going to it's gonna say a lot to, uh, I think there's a game on Friday too, and it's a lot to this league, where the league's at in general, um, you know, just you know, with Ontario folding, 
that was tough to, to see right. and hear about that. I was kind of pumped about the California, but you know, these, th these things happen. It's part of the business and you just kind of have to adapt. Like I was saying earlier, and you just roll with the punches. So we, we can't worry about all that other stuff. You know, we got to focus on us, focus what we're doing, come up with a game plan and execute it on Saturday. Right. And you're going to be invited back in for at least this team, the new iteration, the empire first time in almost two years, it's been, it's been that long, but it's from what I can tell, at least on my end, I live in Indianapolis for those that don't know, or just for yourself. So, you know, I, I take things in via social media and I, you know, any of the news footage I can get from the, you know, the Albany area from their local TV coverage uh, for a player on the ground. I mean, what is the general census that, you know, they feel like this is the same Albany team is coming back. Is it, does it feel like there's that much community, like, you know, hype for it right now? Or is it that you're going to be working for it, you think? See, it, right now, I don't really know. It, it's hard. The community is, you know, is going to support us regardless. They, they love football around here. They love it. Sure. It's, it's not that AFL atmosphere, I guess, if you want to say. So for those that don't know too much about AFL, IFL, NAL, the AFL is top tier. You know, it's, it's right. top of the line. And because it's not that, I think the hype is still there. It's just not up there like it was. Now, do I think it would be if COVID didn't happen? Yes. That's but because it did happen, now we're only, I think we're limited to 4,000 fans or something like that, 20%. I was, I was here in 33 25%. capacity from, I believe, the NBC station that I was watching okay. footage. Thir I think it's 33. 33%? Yes. Okay. So then we might have more. We might have more than that. Because we, they were averaging 10,000, you know, right. in the AFL round. So I, I think we will reach that capacity. Um, but, you know, we can't have the, the streets, you know, marked off this time. We can't have the block parties like they did for the home games, which is awesome. People love doing that. What, who doesn't? It's like the Bills, you know. Who doesn't like drinking for, you know, whatever reason that may right. be for – Sitting out here in Albany. I mean, that, 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 those, those tailgates are on my bucket list, Craig. So, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, the, the hype is there. I, I don't think it's it's as high as it was, given the fact that we are in the NAL and not the AFL this year. Um, obviously, you don't have a ton of guys coming back from that championship team. you got a couple. So, that makes it – because, you know, the fans like to follow people, right? Right, fans right. like find players and stuff like that. So, you know, lucky for me, I'm from here. So a lot of people know who I am, which is nice, you know, family, friends and, and fans in general. So that's nice. But it, it, it's just not the same because A, COVID and B, it's not the AFL. So I think it'll still be good. I think it's good for the city. Um, I just don't think it's it's up there quite yet where it was when we were in the AFL. Right. And you know what? My, my thing is too, I, I looked at, I looked at the revised schedule, by the way, they did, I think, make this the right way where yes, you do have two early home games, but you know, progress through the summer, late July, you're going to get another two. Maybe there's more fans that can come in. They watch mm -hmm. some of these games cause they'll be on YouTube. So it'll be free for people to watch, you know, there's that chance. So you right. know, I, that's, uh, but I asked just because, you know, it's early, it, the season's about to start. So, I mean, you know, they've had some buildup. It's been pretty tight. Again, about a, about a month and a half or so that they've really kind of said like, all right, let's, let's get this ball rolling. Cause it was, it was coming up to like uh, the top of the like high noon when they were about to say, we're not going to have a season. Yeah. I, I, I didn't even know what I was going to do yet because even I was looking at, uh, looking at the, the articles and whatnot being posted online. I'm just like, dang, is, is Albany even going to play? So, and I, you know, that would have been devastating, you know, not just for the city, but I was just like, you know, now, you know, where am I going to go? And I, I had, you know, options, but I'm, mm -hmm. I want to play at home. You know what I mean? Oh, sure. So yeah, being back home, it's a no brainer. So it was tough, man. It, you know, to, yeah, it's about a month and a half. You're, you're right. And nobody knew what was really going on. And then, you know, you got the head coach leaving, the assistant head coach leaving. And it's like, What's going on, man? Is is Albany collapse? Is the empire collapsing? Like, what's what's happening here? So, you know, I think they've done a great job with what they were given, which was not a lot of time, mm -hmm. you know, in developing the roster that we have now. 
And, and I know the, the people are putting us out there at number one, you know, before Jacksonville, but, and that's fine. I, you know, I don't really, I don't really pay any mind to that because like I said, this Saturday, we're going to find out where we're at, you know, and then we can progress after that. So we'll see how it goes, but you know, it's, it's, it's a long season, even though it's a shortened season, it's still a long season, you know, sure, I mean, eight weeks, there, you know, the, yeah, eight, eight, we eight games. And then, you know, you got a couple bye weeks in there. And like you said, and I'm hoping that we do well and the better we do those two home games at the end of the year, you know what I mean? Maybe we start getting even more people in. Maybe we get a playoff bird. Yeah. Maybe we get a playoff game. That, that would be ideal, you know, and then hopefully by that time we can, we can get more people on the stands and, you know, we we're fighting for another championship and then we can really get this city going crazy again. That would be something really awesome I, because I'm telling you what myself, you know, now I've seen one AFL game in my lifetime. It actually was a destroyers game. Funny enough against the Albany empire in Columbus. <laughs> uh, it was a massacre for Columbus for you at the time, but yeah, but still like it was, it was great to see it, you know? So been obsessed with since and i'm just telling you right now i will eventually get my way out to albany whether it's the end of this year or next year when it is fully open because i gotta check it out rook, rook before we go i got a few like me questions to ask just I don't yeah, know, yeah 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 go ahead know, curious first off uh have you seen the un i'm assuming you've seen the uniforms are they the similar like phenom elites like the 2019 season that they were wearing or are these different jerseys can you even uh, reveal that uh, the, jer- the jerseys is, uh, <laughs> I think it's a work in progress right now. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, they're, they're not the same. They're not Phenom Elite. Uh, I believe they are, I think we had to do a last minute jersey change because the color was off. Oh. So, yeah, so we, we had to do something about that. So I think we're getting Russell jerseys for right now. Um, I See, I always thought it was Adidas. I thought he was either Adidas or Phenom Elite. And it, it didn't end up turning out like that. So mm. I think they are. Uh, I think they're they're going to be Russell jerseys, but I don't. I don't know. Uh, I don't know what they look like yet. We're just going to have to find out. I'm I'm in the dark like everybody else. So fair point. <laughs> hey, week of start wondering. You know, we get we got in the helmet photos. I mean that one. That one I felt wasn't going to change much with the shield on the you know the dark blue. I mean, if it did, I'd be like, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we got the same. They, helmet, so that's good. What are they trying to do here? Um, Second, secondly, how's the turf looking? The uh, like I, I saw, I, the same. I, I saw they had the a, the Arena Bowl thirty two logos on some of the sidewall padding still. I believe they're going to, uh, excuse me, I believe they're going to change that before before the first game. Okay. I would assume they're going to get different dasher boards on there. I still feel like they're being made for you know other sponsorships that we have, so we'll get those dasher boards on there. And just uh, and just go go with it from there. I, that's that's the side that I don't you know. I just don't worry about putting the ball through the uprights. Oh, of course. <laughs> I, this is just me. You being on being on ground zero. I just I got oh, yeah. to You know, I, I, yeah, have to, they'll, I have they'll, to. They'll, I don't think they'll keep those up there. I'm pretty sure that they'll take those off and and put some of the uh, like I said, some of the sponsors and the vendors that that are around here and put them up there. Awesome. Hey, great to hear. Purpose. You know how it is. The market, the marketing, and the advertising. I'm sure they'll. Sure, well, sure. I mean, all I, I follow the show, social. You guys, you guys have been going around town, meeting up with some of the local owners. You know, doing doing the uh, nice community outreach. I like it. You know. Oh yeah, oh yeah. We were actually just at um, a Greek Fest a couple weeks ago. I think uh, a okay. week and a half ago, Greek Fest in the weekend. We had a lot of fun there. So, uh, you know, just getting out in the community and, and and doing stuff and and being present and just getting that that Albany Empire name out there. I end this with a weird fact of mine that I realized the other day. So as I was talking about, and you know, you were on the Spokane and Empi- the Spokane empire at one point, fun little mm-hmm. fact, the empire that Albany has was from a trade of names for the shock name with the AFL and the IFL. So in a weird twist of fate, you somewhat end up back on the same team that you used to be on. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Strangest it- coincidence, but there you have it. <laughs> I knew that. I actually knew that too, that the owner of the empire had the name and the other guy had the shock name, the, the mm-hmm. rights to it, I should say. And it is crazy how that, that all turned out. Cause I believe the Spokane shock should always be the Spokane shock. Oh, Spokane yeah. empire. It's cool, but 
you know, when they when they got the uh, the Empire name, I thought that was a nice touch to be the Albany Empire, which was good. And then, the, you know, now you have the Spokane Shock back. So I think it was a win win for both teams. Oh, yeah. Hey, two weeks ago when they had the uh, new Shock turf out on the field, watching that on YouTube, it's pretty slick. It, it definitely feels yeah. right is what is what you and I are talking about. It's what was meant to be. Mm-hmm. Craig, thank I you agree. for joining, by the way. I, I can't say enough. Just uh, anyone taking the time on the show, I can't appreciate enough. Uh, best of luck. I know, you know, this coming uh, Saturday, you're going to be playing the Columbus Lions at the Times Union Center. If you like, if you can give us some details on the game and just maybe where we can find you online, you know, we can catch some of the highlights of yours. Yeah, yeah, obviously. So you can watch the game on YouTube. You just go to, uh, you know, NAL, type in National Arena League and YouTube. Link should be right there. If you guys want to find me on Twitter, it's uh, Craig the Leg 19. If you guys want to find me on Instagram, it's Craig Peterson. And obviously, just my name is Peterson. And uh, that's pretty much it. Oh, and if you, uh, I'm pretty sure the website, is, I think it's Albany, I think it's Albany Empire NAL, I believe. So if you want to go on the website, check us out, buy tickets, whatever you want to do, it's all out there. Craig Peterson, thank you very much for joining us. Craig the Leg, Peterson's going to be playing on Saturday, making his debut for the Albany Empire. We're looking forward to it. I'm definitely looking forward to it, getting some more indoor arena action that we're used to. And, you know, it's great to have more game and getting back to what we have, uh, we're used to seeing at least before 2020 happens. So thank you for joining. I wish you the best of luck this season. Uh, score many a deuce, as you will. Uh, that's still saying it still is weird to say, but I, but you know, it's football, so that's all I can think about. But have a great season, man. We 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 wish you the best. Thank you very much. I appreciate you having me on, and uh, hopefully we'll uh, we'll get we'll get another one of these going halfway through the season. We'll talk about what's oh, yeah. going on. Yeah, let's do that. I, I love. <laughs> I you're already you're already planning ahead. I got to do it now. <laughs> well, let's do that. I appreciate it, though. Thank you so much. The Gridiron Gallery Podcast. New episodes every Friday on your favorite podcast platforms, YouTube, and premiering first, as always, at 11 a.m. Eastern, 8 a.m. Pacific, only on UnhingedSN.com.